Hey, what's up here? Cedric for CRS and Commentary. Now I'll be reviewing WWE's Bad Blood, which was a couple of days ago. And uh, I'm, I, I reviewed it. I, well, got my notes down and everything. I'm going to jump right on into this because they was taking them down. WWE was finding it and taking it down little by little. But I was able to get all of it. And so uh, if you don't agree with me, you know, I, I'm going to be honest with how I feel, you know. So you want me, you want me to know how you feel? got the comment section that I do read so I wasn't happy with the opening cinematic meeting between Paul Levesque and Cody Rose I just thought that just not needed it was slightly funny at a few points but it wasn't needed at all and it had nothing to do with the rest of the show I it just they don't need to do this they don't and and then so my, my, my question is once that was done and whatnot commentary why no it was a uh, the uh it was jade cargill and her group uh naomi and bianca why call it a history changing event i mean literally no seriously rationally why call it a history changing event what can they do that will alter what has happened in the past T tell me that it's a history changing event not history making but then again history is being made every single day because everything you do is in the past now so okay but it's not going to change the past also why have the announcer announce the people that will announce the opening i don't i don't get that i just never understood that um so i had to turn the light off all right so they open with hell in cell i thought they might close the show with that uh but it's Drew McIntyre versus CM Punk. So the ring announcer announces the Hell in a Cell match that was announced prior by an, the announced team of Naomi, Bianca, and Jade. And so, okay. Then commentary says that uh, they said the Hell in a Cell has ended careers, but it never has. It's shortened careers or, I mean, I, how did it go say that? It's shortened careers. It hasn't. You know, there's injuries and such, yeah, but all that other stuff, nope, not once. I I don't, I don't get it. And Hell in the Cell is just an oversized war games match where they was um, where they had the 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 roof over it, but it was too short. And I think it was Brian Pillman that got power bombed and got hurt from that, but his career wasn't shortened. You know, not from that anyway. Um, now I had to note that I love this fan made spot. So Drew's theme ends and the fans can damn near be heard inhaling and waiting. I knew what was going on. Did you? So Punk's theme starts and they start singing the first half of the first verse. And I loved it. I loved that a lot. The fans can make something amazing at times. So, uh, Punk and Drew, they don't fought many times, right? And I had to note this. They fought many times. And I think it was cold. He says, the, tri the trilogy starts now. And that might have been a flub. But I'm like, the trilogy begins now? I'm like, what, what's been going on? What was the other, the other two matches? And then, I'm like, okay, he probably meant it ends now but then you're gonna say it ends now you letting us all know that this is over over so you shouldn't say that will this end this feud will this be the the final time we see these two because th there's nothing else that we could do to make this worse for them and we're worried about their health and their careers was something 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 and so the chant, the fans, they chant that they want, they want tables, and then when the, you know, and that's as soon as the, as soon as both of them go outside the ring, it's like we want tables. I'm like, there's a whole cage to play with. So, I'm, I got it. I'm, I'm gonna just shorten this because I wrote a lot of notes, and I'm not gonna go through all of them. But they get a toolbox, they get the wrench out, they're fighting with the wrench. Um, Drew rips off table legs 
And he missed Punk with the table legs, and Punk dropped toe hold him into the table. And Drew got his arm up, which was nice, but then commentary was like, I think his throat hit it. Ah. And then Punk used the table legs to choke Drew. So that was that was all unique, and I thought that was great. That was I liked all of that. I did. I might sound a little droll about it, but no, I liked that. Um, you know, and they used the, the flat table on the mat, and Punk and Drew used the hell out of it. That was nice. Punk bleeds. You know, Drew bleeds. The chairs are fanting, chanting, uh, "Fix the screen." They're fanting. Um, <laughs> so, and then Drew reminds Punk how he's going to hurt him and make his wife leave him. And I'm like, wow, that's 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 mean. Um, so then Drew digs the wrench into Punk's head. Um, the fans are still chanting, fix the screen. I guess they ultimately fix it. So let's see. Uh, after a few, a good beat down, Punk hits a shining wizard in the corner, and he hit a diving double axe handle. That's him making his comeback. The table's upside down. The leg is up. That worries me. That always worries me. And it was like that for a while at this juncture. Um, but I like that Punk, and it's quick, so I don't know if too many caught it. But after the shining wizard, Punk tried to do his face crusher but on the table leg but they never got that far they did i think they got maybe what a, a a step away from the corner so i think the fans wouldn't have caught that but it would have been dastardly it would have been vile if he was able to get it though so that uh, maybe they should have ran a few times and punk try to do the bulldog and then drew backdrop you know do the do a backdrop suplex to to thwart that i think that would have been all right um so then punk he slams the toolbox into him about three good times he lands about three uh shining wizards in the corner he hits the face crusher the table's not there anymore um punk calls for his finish and he he gets it but drew rolls from the ring Punk gets him in the ring, and he's hit with a Claymore kick. And it was quick. It was quick. That was good. I mean, Drew snapped that off. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't even see it coming. I was, and I'm the fan. I'm watching from a distance. I didn't see it coming. You know Punk didn't see it coming. Or is it reversed because he's in there in the fight? But he, he popped that off and got a two count. Um, Drew at one point was going to use the wrench, but he dropped it and went for the kick. But he missed. And... I was like, that's not wise in my book. I just waylay with the... It just makes sense. You got the wrench. You might as well beat on him with it. You've used it a few times. It took a bit, but Punk gains the scorpion hold, and Drew got away and that was, uh, by uh, beating on him with the wrench. This is aggravating. I am yawning up. I haven't yawned all... Well, the two hours I've been away. It's 5.03. It must be the reading I'm doing. Ah. Uh, so then they go to the Bouye, and that speeds up as they evade big moves and, and they do a, a, a chop exchange or the woo exchange. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And it was good. They did not make you look sloppy. They did not make you look stupid. They looked they look good. Um, Drew vertically suplexed Punk from the corner through a table on the outside, and Drew gets up first after a while. And Drew fought hard. He struggled to get the, the ring steps. The, I think it's the bottom section he got into the ring and when he couldn't he was selling his back which was smart but I think he's tired and those steps got to be somewhere at 200 250 pounds they don't wobble like aluminum but it's not it's like some kind of hybrid aluminum uh, aluminum steel or something um, so I, I, I know they're heavy when Drew was picking him up, you could see his muscles straining. So he sold his back when it was really his arms that was messed up. But then after all that effort, Drew, he got, uh, he, he gets taken and hit with the, the GTS, go to sleep. But that was for a two count. Drew hit the air raid crash on the steps that he slid into the ring. But he got only a two count. 
And see, look, these are finishes, but this is a th this is a major match. This is a major match, and it's on the scale of a title match. So it serves multiple levels. So them being a little superhuman is not only warranted but needed. Uh, Punk reverses something that Drew was going to do, and he applied the Anaconda device, which was good. And then Drew, <laughs> Drew tried to <laughs> he tried to escape by using the wrench again, like he did with the scorpion hole. But Punk took it away and just started beating him in the head with it. Like, I'm tired of you hitting me with this wrench. <laughs> Punk tells him, he's like, you're going to die, Drew. And then, but Drew low blows him. And, and then uh, Drew got in a black bag. And I'm like, you know, it looked heavy. But I was like, oh, crap. But no. Nah. Drew throws away a towel that the ref tried to give him to clear off the blade. He's like, I'm trying to help you. <laughs> ref, I'm trying to help you. The bag was full of beads to aid in insulting the ruined bracelet and stuff. So I was like, okay, all right. Punk evades a Claymore kick, allowing Drew to land back first onto the, the corner of the steps. It's a little scary for him. I'm like, I hope he don't, you know, I hope they don't, you know, you don't get a back injury. You know, don't don't get Rick rooted. Don't don't do that. Um, because that was the corner of the steps. You're like, you know, when Rick Rude, Sting dove from the ring on the Rude, and they fell back and hit the the corner of the, the landing or part of the stage uh, for the where the fans were. It, that's what did it. It won't just hit in the floor. It was the corner, and that'll, that'll mess up a disc. Uh, Punk wraps, he pulls a chain out, wraps it around his knee, shoves the beads into Drew's mouth, hits the go to sleep for the three count. A little indie-ish, but it makes sense. It's indie-ish, but it made sense. You know, so after the match, Punk falls on wobbly legs and the staff run to help him. They give him oxygen, clean his forehead some, and yet in the ring, who had just as physical of a match, Drew recovers on his own, and yet he's the loser. You know, and that it can happen that way. It can happen that way, but this is sports entertainment. I would say both should have had medical attention. So Punk gets up. He walks on his own just a little bit. But he was a little stumbly. Taking his victory bows and whatnot. Well, a victory bow is not a bow. But, you know, he he looked good. He, lo he looked strong. And that was good. Okay. So now we get to... Um, Let's see, the women's title match. That was all the, you know, the first 40-some minutes. So they did good. They did good opening match. And you think, okay, how are you going to follow that? They said, what are you going to do to follow it? Because when you follow it, it's got to be better or equal, right? So, but that's not the case. When you have a good presentation, you're not worried about how you're going to follow it too much. You just follow it. You got a format. It's going to be good, Hopefully. But, um, uh, no, this match, this is why I don't watch the women's match. It's, it's, it's their premium live event. So I watched it. I shouldn't have, but I did. So this, the women's title match is Bailey versus Nia Jax. Nia Jax is the champion. And at least the champion came out second. Bailey looked good. I like her outfit. I like Nia Jax's outfit. They did good. Um, they started off with mutual running attacks at each other. And I like that. You don't get to see that often. And Jax easily overpowered Bailey, as she should. So that was good. That was good. Jax hit a rather loud and slightly stiff-looking clothesline for a two-count. Jax lays her out with a few Vader-styled avalanches. I had to note that a quarter crab... Because commentary, I don't, I don't understand. A quarter, it's like a half crab, but it's like to the side and a bit loose. But it can, if you wanted to, you could really jack up somebody's uh, tendons in that knee, whether it be the meniscus or anything else. But it was a half quarter crab, and they called it, it's something like the lion tamer. I'm like, it's nothing close to the elevated reverse Boston crab. No, that's what the lion tamer was. 
you know, and kneeling. This don't even, what even close? That's why I said a side headlock is almost like a sleeper chokehold. No. But anyway, Bailey not only plays cat and mouse, but she did quick hits too, which was smart. Jax regained control for a bit. Bailey fought back, but never from underneath, really, which was good. And then it begins. It begins. And I and I just wrote botch. I'm not a fan of using that word botch. Go back and listen to all of my commentary if you need to. Saying botch does not nope. It's just not a word I use often. It's very rare, extremely seldom, but this was one of them, and commentary did not help. They teased the walking powerbomb like they did from SummerSlam. Bailey was going to powerbomb her. But Jax, in this, Jax just, she fell back. I saw her arc a little bit like she threw her arms and head back. But don't do things you don't know how to do. It's that simple. Don't do things you don't know how to do. Practice, practice, practice 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 don't just say yeah i think i could do this or yeah i could do it no show me jacks just fell back and fully incapable of bending her table stiff torso and she just hit the mat nearly jacking up her neck on the bottom rope bailey who was a second or half a second out of the move Standing there, she just throws herself over. <laughs> and I'm like, come on. Commentary's like, it was a Frankensteiner, though, you know, and I'm like, nope. And they it's, it would have been it, it, it. and they called tried to call it a Huda Karana, but no, it, it would have been a Frankensteiner, you know, going on the best names that we got for it, that is. So commentary trying to cover I'm like, I guess that's what it was meant to be. It was in the notes, but they could see on the screen, it won't close to that. Either case, it was followed by a belly-to-belly -belly suplex for a two-count. And it sounded like the fans were chanting, we want Tiffy at one point. Bailey tried a sunset flip bomb, and it was a train wreck. Just a train wreck in the corner. Bailey hit a diving elbow drop for a two-count, and then the kickout sent the challenger out of the ring. So that was pretty cool. Jack Jax runs into the steps. Because reasons. Bailey hits an elbow off the steps and then tries to, to drag dead weight. I mean, Jax is laying there prone. She's, it looked terrible. It looked like a flea trying to drag a cat. So Jax gently power bombs Bailey onto the steps and then sloppily throws her into the barricade. And then on both ends, what was this supposed to be? Jax tried to pop up Samoan drop. Okay? But Bailey said like she was going to do a flying armbar, maybe, or something. And Jax just fell back with both crashing awkwardly. Commentary tried to cover it up, but it was just all messed up. Bailey hit a Samoan drop eventually. It was short, but he, she hit it. Cover for a two count. The kick out threw Bailey off the ref. The ref sells well at first, and they fight over fight over her. But you know, Jax took a kick to the to the head and splashes the ref. It was like you could see the the easy setup for it, and it looked a bit phony. It was nice looking, but for someone like me, I was like, oh, that it just didn't look real. It, was, it looked too choreographed. Bailey hits her finish, goes for the cover. The fans are counting. They get up to eight or ten. It's one of them. Tiffy runs in. Yep. And ref, the referee eventually recovers, picks up the case. Oh, the ref is fine. No back injury, no back hurt, no back pain. Ref is like, okay, I'm just walking around now. You know, should have got a different ref. They should have got her out of there. She, she a little ref. She just got splashed by a big wrestler. They should have got a new ref. That's what should have happened. But Tiffy tries to use the case. The fans are like, oh, you should use it, you know, to, to, to hit Jax. She's down. Get her. 
and they're chanting cash it in cash it in and the ref is like look here's the case I, it was on the mat here you go and I'm like shouldn't you disqualify her for being in the ring and the and obviously the case was used at some juncture and so Naya sits up and sees it so drama ensues and Jack kicks out of the O'Connor roll that she was snuck into the ref you know just perfectly okay still Tiffany keeps distracting Bailey messing with her from the outside then Naya hits a super Samoan drop bonsai drop one two three well bonsai drop Tiffany is left in the ring Jax walks to the back Not looking looking pretty worse for wear and so that went down half I thought it would half I, I was half right so they're going to tease this until they know if they're going to turn Tiffy babyface or not. And going on Jax's style, Tiffany's going to have to be the babyface. But they got to wait it out. I think that's what they're going to do. Or maybe get a WrestleMania match if Jax can, if Jax can hold the belt that long. Um, so now we get Finn, Finn Balor, Prince Devitt is more popular name. Versus Damian Priest. This I labeled this a grudge match, and it should have been. So they open up with mutual anger, and it looks like a fight at first. It looks like a, a like I'm mad. I'm gonna do this. Priest overpowers Balor. Uh, you know, on and on the outside, Balor hit a counter sling blade, and then the video skipped. I don't I don't understand. It just skipped. It was in the ring. Priest landed an epic counter forearm. They called a punch, but it it, it was loud. Baylor came off, Balor came off the ropes, I mean off the top rope, and he got nailed. And it, at first I thought it was a weird punch, but it was a forearm, and it was it was good, it was good. Um, Priest did his kicks, and Balor eventually countered with a Pele kick that dropped Priest, and it was a good one. Priest had to lean his head in just a little bit, but he but it still looked alright. Priest hit the crucifix bomb for a two count. Priest pounces Balor up onto the announce table, and then he hit a crucifix bomb on the apron. Judgment Day run in. Balor hit the double foot stomp for a two count. Priest counter kicks the chair into Balor. They turn up the heat with counters, fast pace. Balor hit the foot stomp on Priest back twice. Priest caught him on the third one, hit the choke slam. One, two, three. Um. Let's see. Uh, then let's see. Paul Levesque, he comes out. You can see. You can see he still hit. He's still. <clears throat> you can see he's still bit by wrestling. You can see it in his eyes and his posture. He he wants to be in that ring. He wants to wrestle. He wants to be doing promos. He wants to be antagonistic. He wants to be the top guy. You can see it. He's still bit. He is still bit. His theme puts him mentally where he wants to be, but he can't be that guy anymore. I can be honest with you, after the theme, his politics and stuff, and the way he treated Chris Masters, I don't care. I don't want, I don't cheer for him to be messed up. It's just, I don't care. But he does something good. He announces Crown Jewel, an annual event. So reigning major champions will do battle, but not for their belts. But for this new belt, and they he unveiled it. And this uh oh, this is a beautiful belt. It's huge. I know what they're doing. I know what they did. They're picking on AEW. It looks very close to the belt CM Punk has from AEW in terms of size and shape. It makes me wonder if Punk is gonna get a run at some point and eventually get this but this is for the men and women then Gunther comes out Gunther reminds them of Triple H raising the hand raising his hand at King of the Ring and says you know Crown Jewel will be the same he has to defend his belt uh, Gunther mentions he has to defend his belt on Raw against Sami Zayn and he says but we both know that people like him are not cut out to be top guys and you can see Triple H give the nod like, yeah, but you're unveiling a little too much. And Gunther nods like, you know, it's true, but 
I'm breaking some some I'm giving things away, but you know, it is what it is. And then not only that, but it kind of goes with what I was saying, but Sami Zayn can be a great top guy. And I think they're also going with that. In addition, not only did Triple H kind of give the nod of, yeah, you kind of letting everybody know, but it's also that shrug of, but you don't know what I got in mind. (laughs) So I like that. I did like that. Gunther turns his attention to Goldberg since the fans are chatting Goldberg, you know. So, and then I listened to Jim Cornette when he said that Gunther on the promo said to Bret Hart that his favorite wrestler was Goldberg. So Gunther says that he's not his favorite. And how could a one-trick pony like him be his favorite? And Goldberg is like, eh, eh you know, smiling, eh, you know, with his son, Gage, and whatnot. So, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah, this is part of the show. And then Gunther says that he holds Goldberg is a better father than he was a wrestler. And Gage has to mention something to his dad. And Goldberg's like, oh, hell no. So then Goldberg breaks through the barricade. Staff are blocking him. And he's just stalking the ring. The, the, the staff's like, we're not going to let you through. And Gunther's like, come on in here. And I'm sitting here like, Goldberg got into go mode quick. You know? He, he knows how to put himself there. And so, and plus to him, it's just part of the show. But Goldberg, is his, his face went from, yeah, this is fun, you know, just, yeah. And then it was like, no, nah, I'm going to hurt you now. I, I, I like that he can do that. That makes him stay legit in the fans' eyes, no matter how much they know of work that it is. So Zami Zayn sneaks up, attacks Gunther from behind, you know, and... Then the, he's held back on the outside. Gunther uses that to kick him in the face. Goldberg boasts at the end, like days of old, and the fans chanting his name. Nothing is missed a beat there. Um, on the way back, Goldberg slapped the table next to Corey Graves, seemingly, seemingly scaring the hell out of him. So that, that was funny. So after that, we get the women's world title match. So we got Dominic, who makes his intro with Liv. And he's taking everything of his father and Uncle Eddie. It's not bad at all, just highly noticeable. It's really good. It works for him. I mean, literally, it works for him. Like, I I can't see him not doing this. So it works for him. Liv Morgan, champion versus Rhea Ripley. Rhea come out second. Um, I, I'm not body shaming. I'm not. Rhea is attractive but um i'm gonna say this i want her to work her legs like tiffany stratton it could be tiffany just like that because she's a as i read up on the gymnast because i was like who's kidding you that's what i was looking for and it was like oh nobody she's just her okay so dominic is locked in this alleged shark cage. Um, and Rhea mentions on the mic that he's afraid of heights and tells the crew to lift him up. But see, that was already told to us by commentary long before Ripley even came out. Now, I suppose this was just for the fans in the arena, but they didn't react to it because they probably already knew because of advertising on Raw about what's going to be done. Dom looks scared at least. I have been in certain situations where his physical and facial reactions were very very appropriate so if i was like i am believing this uh so the match begins Rhea pumbles live for a while and the fans are chanting mommy before live counters and takes over a little bit so live does a good job working the leg half crab falling back with it slamming it on the apron and then into the post Pulling on it, simple, highly effective though. Very good, very good leg work. Um, Liv hit a sunset flip uh, power bomb into the barricade that looked dangerous for Rhea's neck. And I know she hit on her extreme upper back, but that's, I, th- I, th- I think they need to work that a little better. Something. Maybe tighten it up, drop closer to the apron, do a flat back bump instead. I think that would be better. Um, Liv hit a diving code breaker for a two count. It looked good. Rhea escaped the ring rope uh, DDT with a front flip, which was nice. 
really nice. Um, and, you know, and she did that practically on one leg in a very crunched, tight area. It was extremely and damn athletic. That should have popped the fans more, but Liv's hair is so all over the place. You really, I'm going to tell you this, half the fans couldn't even see what was going on. I'm going to promise you that. They just saw Liv up there in the ropes and fall back, Rhea fall back, and then Rhea pop it up on her feet, and they're like, what happened? I promise you that's what was going on. Rhea hit a tossing crucifix bomb, and it was nice. It should have honestly ended the match because she, she did that, and Liv hit like a pile of rocks. It was bad. Dom opened the cage door for some reason, and he's 20 feet high. Rhea hit a frog splash for a two count. They reapplied an elevated Texas clover hole, but not for long. There's a rope break. They got out the ropes. And they're looking at Dom. Rhea flings Liv into the barricade and taunts Dom DX style. It was kind of, kind of cute. Not in like, oh, she's cute. No, just taking liberties. It was cute. Rhea hit the pump handle slam uh, on the floor. I think she calls Riptide, I think. I don't know. And Dom falls from the cage. Just slivers out the cage, and then she's... And it's tethered by some kind of chain or something. I don't get that. Um, I guess they chained him down or something in case. I don't know. But he's hanging upside down. And Rhea asks, she's in the ref, in the ring with the ref. He's like, you know, hey, I need a minute for this. You know, I got unfinished business. And I was like, all right, go ahead. And I'm like, wow. And the camera was way up close. I mean, you could have done an eye exam on Rhea. And so they, they forced you to hear that. Which made it look bad, but you know, it's pinata time. So she got the kendo stick and she goes, Happy birthday to me. And then she just wails on Dom without it, just wailing on him. Just beat just beating on the man. Just beating on him. I mean, just beat on him. Just just beat a man. Hang in there. Just beat him. And I mean, she did that with the gusto that somebody scorned should do it. Just beat on him. And then some woman named Raquel Rodriguez knocks Rhea down to save Dom and then goes to a... And then she in the, in, in the ring, she does a version of what's called the Volcano Explosion, uh, which is a one-arm powerbomb slam. And then the match ends with a DQ. Rhea wins, but she doesn't get the belt again. And... This Raquel Rodriguez, she's there. Um, that's a big woman. That's a that's that's a big woman. You know, I'm like Rhea got some comp right now. She got some comp. So now we get to the main event tag team match. You know, damn. Thirty three minutes into this, I ain't expect to go this long. I've 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 cut a lot out. I've cut a lot out. I got. Four exact four pages of notes. And I probably went over basically only two of them. Wow. Because, see, that, that's my issue. I do, I write this down almost like doing commentary more so than just a review. That's my major issue. And that's probably what turned people off. So I'm trying to shorten this as I go. Um, look, I know it's a college marching band and all, but. All I could think of was the return of the solid gold dancers. That's all I could think. The girls, look, <laughs> the girls could have danced on beat to Cody's horned theme. The girls were there just gyrating and jerking. I was like, what are y'all dancing to? It was almost like Bird Demick. The band could not keep up with Cody's theme. I think they were told to give up because they abruptly stopped a bit. But And then there was some subtle background from the horns. I don't know. Maybe some just taking liberties and just say, I'm, I'm going to do this. I don't know. But it just won't write. But Cody's gear was nice. It was straight up nice. I was like, that's awesome. Um, I wish he would stop with the big event mask. It just, how are you going to wear it out? Take about four steps and then take it off. I I get it. You know, hey, it's part of the outfit. Take it off. Now they see you. You're doing all the bows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But leave it off. Just leave it off. You don't need it. You don't need it. If anything, how about this? 
have a headband version like Dusty Rhodes polka dot, but you know, have American Nightmare or Nightmare written across it. And just use that. You got the blonde hair like Sting did, so use it. That's how I said, use it. Um, so now, Roman Reigns, he get live drummers, and the fans are just, damn, they actually get me into this guy. That's exactly how I wrote it, ellipses and all. Reigns' entrance gives me enough goosebumps to be literal, to be federally protected. Just wow. Just wow. Roman, his Cody's music stops and the fingers go up. Compared to what they were doing, the fans were almost dead silent. And I'm gonna tell y'all this. That dead silence in comparison. That dead silence is louder than anything in Leon France. At this juncture, they have outdone Leon France. The finger in the air, acknowledging Roman Reigns, the bowing of the heads. Just that. Is what that is the paragon of over okay and Roman walks out he is walking center stage pyro going off pageantry amazing I am I'm like I'm getting pumped for this match I am like right now I can feel a tiny little adrenaline rush going I'm trying to keep it at bay don't need that going on that is awesome pyro goes off while he's walking pause finger in the air i was like two things one picture perfect the other for my own comedy i'm like in loving memory <laughs> that's just i we do that here we pause something at points and say oh in loving memory so you get a loving memory try it and and, and and try not to laugh watch a tv show somebody's close up or whatnot pause it just randomly pause it in loving memory. Does it look like a picture of somebody being in loving memory or not? Try it. Just saying. So, Bloodline, Jacob Fatu, Solo Sokoa versus Undisputed Champion Cody Rhodes, non-title match, tag team only, and the original Tribal Chief, Roman Reigns. And more two things here. People want to see Jacob Fatu. How is he going to function? We've seen him wrestle a little bit, but this is a longer-winded match. How is he going to interact with Roman Reigns? Will Roman Reigns honor his word with Cody? There's a lot going on in this. Is Solo going to get dusted off? Would Jacob say, hey, I'm with Roman? But just to let y'all know, Jacob, he already said it. He is loyal to the tribal chief. He didn't say he was loyal to Solo. So, you know, Solo loses, he's going to be with Roman. That's, that's just how that's going to work, I guess. That's, that's the best thing I could think of. But um, at the... The in-ring standoff, Solo holds up the Ula Fala Lay and passes it to Jacob, who passes it to the outside and talks a little trash. Cody starts with Jacob, but Jacob, he eats a few moves before everyone enters the ring, and then the ref has to keep some order. Solo and Roman, they're, they're tagged in. Solo is dumped outside, and in the ring, Jacob and Roman, they they tease the fight that some want to see. They circle each other. They stand. I'm like, okay, they're building it up. But I don't think the fans were paying too much attention. I'm not sure. No, I'm going to take that back because they got quiet. There's two things you ever known in, in, in school. There's a fight that you're about to see. Everyone gets loud, which draws teachers' attention and staff attention. Or they get quiet so nobody knows the wiser. <laughs> you know, if the staff can't see a circle, 
they don't know. So, and I mean, you know, maybe the fans missed it, or maybe they saw it. But Solo takes over on Roman, and he ta he um tags in Jacob, and Jacob really opens up on on Roman. He 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 he, he messes him up, you know. <laughs> And so, they eventually get control. You know, Jacob, he, I wish he stopped this. You know, he leaps high for his error. That's what he does. That's, that's his error. That's his, you know, slip on a banana peel. And he hits the post, falls back. But Roman was, he was down low. He was, he was almost sitting down. So, what 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 was you gonna do, Jacob? You gotta find something else. You know, you, you could have splashed. You could have did the scent. The, not I mean uh, the hip attack in the corner. Roman could have got out the way. That would have been better instead of jumping over somebody that's not there. Just saying. But this shifts the match, and Cody gets the tag. He has to fight both, and eventually Jacob. Hits the pop up Samoan drop to retake control. Jacob uses the trapezius nerve hold on Cody. When in the hell was the last time that was used in wrestling? When? Because, good grief, I ain't seen that in ages. And he made it look good, but I can honestly say he made it look stronger than what Cody was selling it for. Cody nearly got the much needed tag. Jacob snatches Roman from him to the floor. Solo tried an avalanche Cody in the corner. But it was super light. And she was watching at this point and she was just that was really light. And I was like, you ain't trying to kill him. You know. And then Cody gets the uh, hot tag. Roman goes off on Solo. And Roman hits Solo in the corner the same way. And he made it look good. <laughs> Roman got a crucifix hold for a two count he hit a superman punch for a two count Solo ain't going down you know uh, Bloodline uh, they came in with double super kick on Roman that looked good BME by Jacob Solo with the frog splash Cody saves the two the pin with the on two Cody clears the table for, for a pop fans are like yay Cody evades a Hip attack, Jacob busts down the barricade and throws a fit throwing chairs. Cody hits his finish on the floor. Jacob gets up slow, which is right. Ate the move, but he, he recovered slow. So that still puts it as a legitimate finish, which was good. And it shows Jacob is a he's a monster, so that's good. Cody kicks Jacob onto the table, hit the diving splash, breaking down the table. Let, and this is a perfect dive. It was a picture perfect dive. And Cody signaled to Roman, this you, man. I'm sacrificing myself for you. You can see it. That was perfect. That was good. He made that dive hit. Jacob's done. Solo and Roman ain't in the ring. They exchange punches as they get to their feet. Roman hits the Superman punch. G.O.D. distracts Solo. Hit the, uh, distracts. Solo hit the spear for a two count. And that might have done something to Roman. Solo shouts that Roman lied to him about being next in line. He's like, you lied to me. You know, you said I'm next in line. You lied to me. See, it was kind of like, that don't make sense. And I'm like, he had to shout something. He's got a delay. And then this hooded guy shows up. And it's Jimmy Uso. I was wondering what that guy was. So Jimmy takes out G.O.D. like anyone else does. I mean, he's not doing anything spectacular. Roman hits the spear on Solo, gains the pin. Jimmy is Jimmy's in the corner bowing to the original tribal chief who is ailing. I don't know if it's his back or his hip. I think it was his I think it was his hip. Um so then now Jimmy is all about like look man, I'm happy. I'm bouncing. I'm all over the place. So Jimmy and Roman, they hug it out to a major pop. Roman and Jimmy, they leave the ring, and G.O.D. start beating down Cody. Solo joins in beating down Cody. Uh, Jacob stays on the outside. Jimmy talks Roman into returning to help Cody. Jimmy sprints. He sprints full bore. I don't even know if he was touching the floor. He just went. 
Jimmy is on he, his feet are as light as feathers. He that dude could be Mercury. Stay away from the sun. And he um he's super kicking and all this other stuff. And when he dart to the ring, Roman started to run and just slowed down like I'm old. Roman just e immediately advanced 40 years. It was just quick. But he got in, he did some fighting, he helped Cody, and they all clear house. Roman lifts the belt, looks at it longingly, hands it to Cody. Four, four, small pop, small pop. It was good. And then all I was, here you go, and the crowd goes ape shit. I was like, what is wrong with them? And, 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 and she was like, oh, it's The Rock. And I was like, I did not hear his music. And so the rock music hit. The fans are deafening. He comes out. He stands with a belt on his shoulder. I don't know what's going on. He's staring. He's looking at him. He milks the scene. Counts up to four on his hand. Does the high sign cutthroat to end the moment. And he leaves. And on, his, on the screen is all the lightning. Because he's the most electrifying sports entertainer in all this. And well, the most electrifying man in sports entertainment. And he's the final boss. And I'm like, yeah, I had a feeling that I'd be on the, the moniker, the final boss. Um, and I don't know, he's, he counted up to four. I don't know what he's saying. So I'm like, is that Jacob, Solo, Cody, Roman? And it's like, I got something planned for y'all. You know, going to be some Survivor Series something. What's going on? I don't know if this is going to be on Raw. This is going to be on SmackDown. I'd rather be on SmackDown. Allegedly, The Rock Show, because you know he'd always lay the SmackDown if on somebody's candy ass, as always. And I wonder what they got in store. But I'll say this. I have not watched Roman Reigns four years as champion, but they said that he looked naked out there without the belt, and that reminded me of Hogan. When I saw him, uh, I think it was WrestleMania four. They was doing some kind of tournament or something. And he wasn't wearing the belt. And I was like, he looks naked without it. So, it could be that. But, um, overall, damn good premium live event. They do it well like they always do. And with that, this has been Cedric for CR Wrestling Commentary. Reviewing WWE's Bad Blood. And I want y'all to be cool, be chill, be safe. So I can see you next time.